Lesson 6.3, Estimate Fraction Sums and Differences. We can make reasonable estimates of fraction sums and differences by rounding the fractions using benchmarks. Or we can compare the numerator to its denominator and round the fraction. Then we can add or subtract the rounded numbers. To use benchmarks, we round the fraction to zero, half, or one whole. And we can do this using a number line. We can see one eighth is closer to zero than it is to one half. So it rounds to zero. It rounds down. Here we have a number line showing sixths, starting with zero six for zero, to six six for one whole. Two six is closer to one half than it is to zero, it would round up to one half. Three fourths is over here, it would round up to one. We have zero fourths for zero, two fourths for half, and four fourths for one whole. We would round it up to one whole. One third, we have zero thirds for zero, one third, two thirds, and three thirds for one whole. If we go into the middle of the number line, that would be halfway. And we can see one third is closer to half than it is to zero. So it would round to one half. Every school day, Tala walks one eighth mile to Sujin's house. Then they walk together two fifths mile to school. About how far is Tala's house from school? She walks one eighth mile. Here we have a number line in eighths, starting with zero eighths as zero, four eighths as one half, and eight eighths as one whole. It's closer to zero. And two fifths, we have zero fifths as zero. There is no line for one half. We have to put one in the middle between zero fifths and five fifths for one whole. It would be about right here. And we can see two fifths is closer to one half than it is to zero. We can estimate one eighth plus two fifths as zero plus half. It would be about half of a mile. And remember that this little symbol is a symbol for is approximately equal to. We can use that when we are adding or subtracting estimates. We can compare the numerator to its denominator to round a fraction and find a reasonable estimate. We look at 11 twelfths. The numerator and denominator are about the same. 11 is almost 12, so it rounds to one whole. For 5 ninths, the numerator is about half the amount of the denominator. 5 is about half of 9, so 5 ninths rounds to 1 half. For 1 fifth, the numerator is much less than the denominator, so 1 fifth rounds to 0. It's very important that you remember when the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction is equal to 1 whole. If we have 1 for a numerator and for the denominator, it's equal to 1 whole. Same numerator and denominator, it's equal to one whole. It doesn't matter how large our numerator or denominator are, if they are the same, it's equal to one whole. As you get into higher grades in middle school into high school, you'll see decimal numbers for a numerator or denominator, a variable for a numerator or denominator, whatever n is equal to, they're both n, that would be equal to one. And as you get into algebra, if you have the same numerator as denominator, this whole thing is equal to 1. We can find the difference by comparing the fraction parts, numerator and denominator, of the mixed number and rounding to the nearest whole or half. We can also round the entire mixed number to the nearest whole. Here we have 1 and 9 tenths. When we look on a number line, here's 0. Here's one whole is 10 tenths, and here's one whole and 10 tenths as a 2. I could have written 20 tenths. 
this 1 and 9 tenths is way over here close to 2 whole. 2 fifths is very close to halfway. So we could say 1 and 9 tenths minus 2 fifths is about 2 minus a half, which is 1 and 1 half. That means this is about 1 and 1 half. We rounded the whole thing up to a whole number 2. Here we have 3 and 5 sixths plus 1 and 7 eighths. The 5 is very close to 6. It's very close to 6 six. So we could say this is 1 whole. So 5 six is about 1 whole. Then we have a 3 in our mixed number. And 3 plus 1 is 4. So it rounds to the whole number 4. We have 1 and 7 eighths. This 7 is very close to the 8. So it's almost 1 whole. We have one hole here, and one plus one is two. This is about two. We can add four plus two, and it's six. Three and five six plus one and seven eighths is approximately six. We need to remember the whole number part of a mixed number when rounding and when estimating. Don't forget that there's one hole here. A mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. We have 1 and 3 eighths plus 2 fifths. This is about 1 and a half. The 3 is about half of the 8, so it's about 1 and a half. 2 fifths is about a half, so we have 1 and a half plus a half. That's equal to 2 whole. And when we round up each fraction to their closest benchmark, our estimate will be greater than the actual sum. 1 and a half is a little greater than 1 and 3 eighths and one half is a little greater than two fifths. So the actual sum is slightly less than two because these are slightly less than our benchmarks. We need to estimate the sum or difference. We have four sevenths minus one eighth. We can think of benchmarks. Four is about half of seven. One eighth is very close to zero eighths, so we can use the benchmark zero. One half minus zero is equal to one half. We didn't take anything away. That means four sevenths minus one eighth is approximately equal to one half. Here we have five eighths plus eight ninths. Five is almost half of eight, so we can use half as that benchmark. 8 is almost 9, so it's almost 9 ninths as one whole, so we can use one whole as a benchmark. We have a half plus one whole. That's equal to one and a half. That means 5 eighths plus 8 ninths is approximately equal to one and a half. Here we have 5 and 1 sixths minus 4 fifths. We can look at this 1 as very close to 0 six, so we can say that this is approximately 5. 4 is very close to 5, so it's almost 5 fifths. We can use the benchmark 1 whole. Now we have 5 minus 1. That's equal to 4. Which means 5 and 1 six minus 4 fifths is approximately equal to 4. Here we have 2 and 1 seventh plus 2 fifths. This 1 is very far away from the 7, so we can think that this is close to zero as zero sevenths, we can use the whole number two. Two is almost half of five, so we can say two fifths is about one half. We can use the benchmark one half. Now we have two plus one half, that's equal to two and a half. That means two and one seventh plus two fifths is approximately equal to two and one half. Mrs. Kim's bakery has 60 pounds of flour. She used half of the flour to bake loaves of bread and one-fourth of the flour to bake cookies. Mrs. Kim estimates that she used more than 35 pounds of flour. Is Mrs. Kim's estimate reasonable? So we think half of 60 pounds is 30 pounds and she used half of the 60 pounds just for the bread. 
if 60 pounds was everything she had for flour and she used half of it for bread, that would be 30 pounds. And one fourth and one fourth is equal to one half. If one half is 30 pounds, then one fourth would be 15 pounds. It would be 15 plus 15 to equal the 30. And if 30 pounds is half, 50 pounds is one fourth. And we can add the 30 and the 15, and we see it's more than 35. So yes, Mrs. Kim's estimate is reasonable. This would be 45 pounds that she used, and she estimated that she used more than 35 pounds. Here's a recipe to make cinnamon honey butter. You use half cup of softened butter, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, and one eighth cup of honey. You mix the ingredients together on high speed with an electric mixer or a wire whisk until blended. You can serve it on toast or muffins or croissants, etc. If we had half cup of honey, would we have enough to make three batches of cinnamon honey butter? It says we need one eighth cup for a batch. If we had half cup, would we be able to make three batches? So we think we need one eighth cup three times. That's one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth for the three batches. That's three eighths. And three eighths is a little less than one half. Four eighths is equal to one half. So yes, we would have enough honey. We could even make another batch, couldn't we? We could have four eighths to make four batches. Be very careful as you use the benchmarks with mixed numbers. Don't forget about the whole number part of the mixed number. Our next lesson, 6.4, we're going to learn about common denominators and equivalent fractions. I hope you have a great day, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.